And we're cutting live to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. We're moments away from history after multiple delays. Indian astronaut Shubhanshu Shukla and three others all set to travel to the International Space Station today. The countdown has begun for the launch of Falcon 9 rocket with Axiom 4 mission to the International Space Station. This is the fourth private astronaut mission carrying U.S. astronaut Peggy Whitson, pilot Shubhanshu Shukla of India and mission specialists from Poland and Hungary. As you know, this comes after several delays and postponements. The initial date was set for the 29th of May. Shubhanshu Shukla all set to travel to the International Space Station on an American commercial mission with three astronauts after SpaceX announced that the weather was favorable for the liftoff. Start of stage two, cryo-helium loading. Brief announcement on stage two loading. Once we hit T0, we're going to watch Falcon 9 and Dragon lift off from historic launch pad 39A and make their ascent. At about 43 seconds into flight, Falcon 9's engines will throttle down to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket, or what we typically refer to as Max-Q. Now, it's worth noting that shortly after we hit Max-Q, the vehicle will go supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. Once we're through that period of maximum dynamic pressure, we throttle up our Merlin engines again. From there, at about two and a half minutes into flight, we have a series of three events that happen in rapid succession. The first is main engine cutoff, also called MECO. This is where all nine Merlin engines shut off in preparation for stage separation. Stage SEP is when the first stage detaches from the second stage, with the first stage making its way back to Earth for landing as the second stage continues on its journey with the third event. Now, SES-1, or second stage engine start number one, that's where the Merlin vacuum engine lights up and propels the second stage along with our AX-4 crew and Dragon into orbit. Now, as stage two heads into the targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute three burns in order to make its way back to Earth, the first is the boost back burn, where three of the Merlin 1D engines reignite and then shut down. That heads the first stage back to Cape Canaveral. The second burn, or the entry burn, helps to slow the first stage down in preparation for entry back into the Earth's atmosphere. About 70 seconds before Dragon reaches orbit, Falcon 9 will land back on Earth. The landing burn will bring the vehicle's speed down rapidly in order to land back on land near the launch site. Shortly before eight minutes into our mission. And then a little less than a minute after that, at T plus eight minutes, 48 seconds, the second stage will cut off its one Merlin engine that was ignited right after stage separation. That concludes a burn that lasts just over six minutes to get into orbit, but we'll wait to hear confirmation of insertion into a good orbit. Then Dragon and the second stage begin preparations to separate Dragon. About 51 seconds after we get into orbit, we should have a great view of Dragon with the four-person crew drifting away in Dragon, moving away from the second stage. Once Dragon's a short distance away, it'll begin check out of the Draco maneuvering thrusters. That'll make sure Dragon continues to increase separation distance from the second stage. The nose cone deploy sequence will initiate just before T plus 12 minutes and finish around T plus 15 minutes, exposing Dragon's docking mechanism in advance of arrival at the International Space Station. Speaking of which, uh, we should hand it back now to Sandra Jones at NASA's Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas for a quick update. Sandra. Thanks, Ronnie. The space station team here in Houston is focused on the critical systems of the International Space Station, all continuing to function as expected ahead of launch. Everything is looking good, and the station will be ready to receive Dragon and the Axiom 4 crew on Thursday. After Dragon is fully docked to the orbiting laboratory, the team here in Houston will assist the Axiom Space and Space Station astronauts with leak checks as they work to open hatches on both Dragon and inside the station's pressurized mating adapter. We expect hatch opening to take place approximately two hours after docking. Once the Axiom 4 crew arrives at the International Space Station, they will be greeted by the Expedition 73 crew, which includes NASA astronauts Nicole Ayers, Anne McLean, and Johnny Kim, as well as JAXA, or Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut Takoya Onishi, and Roscosmos cosmonauts Kirill Peskov, Sergei Rizikov, and Alexei Zubritsky. Flight Director Heidi Brewer is on console right now, leading the flight controllers for launch this evening. And with Mission Control in Houston go for launch, for now, we'll send it back over to Sonia at Kennedy. 
Thanks, Sandra. To dive into some of the science highlights, I'm joined now by Axiom Space's chief scientist, Dr. Lucy Lowe. Lucy, thanks for joining me here at the desk. With so many science portfolios that are going to be accomplished. There are more than 60 from more than 30 countries. We can't cover it all. Give us a high level look of what this portfolio looks like. Yeah, so happy to Sonia. So this mission is chock a block, jam packed full of really interesting and exciting science. We have everything from human research, understanding how the human body reacts to space. We have some really fun life sciences experiments looking at growing plants and all kinds. Uh, we have some physical sciences. We have lots of technology demonstrations and my favorite, lots of science, technology, engineering, uh, art and mathematics outreach events. All the steam things. Exactly. So we've had great success with AX1, 2, 3. Do we have any return payload flyers for AX4? We do. We have our partners at the University of California, San Diego. All right, for more on this, we're also being joined by a special correspondent, Siddharth MP. Siddharth, thank you so much for joining us. We know that this mission has faced multiple delays. Initial date set for 29th, it is the 25th of June now. We're going to be witnessing history in about uh, 20 minutes or so from now. Siddharth, let's talk about the significance of this moment. Indeed, for India, this is a moment like no other because the last time, um, you know, when an Indian astronaut flew to space, that is in 1984 when Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma flew, clearly there was not this kind of buzz, there was no social media, uh, there was not television and media at this scale. So clearly the awareness at that time was much different, but this time the buzz and the awareness that it generates is at a, an all-new level. And there is a very specific reason India is undertaking this flight today and at this point in time. This is because India itself wants to do such human space flight, uh, space flight missions from home soil. ISRO has been working on it since 2018, at least in a formal way. So what we know is that this is more like a training flight. Before we do the same on our own rockets, on our own spacecraft from Sri Arikota, we want to learn how it's done. We want to learn how, uh, how things work on board the space station. So this is one of those initial training steps, so to speak, so that our group captain Shukla can go to space, get a feel of how things work. And his valuable experience will prove extremely crucial for ISRO to also plan Gaganyaan. And when Shukla is back, he can also serve as the leader of Gaganyaan because in the initial phase, we might send one or two astronauts to space. So clearly in that mission, Shukla would be the leader. So this is gaining practical experience, and this is something that will prove crucial for Shukla in the coming years. So this is actually part of India's long-term space goals. Before you do something on your own, you want to learn from someone and get a practical experience. Our last practical experience was back in 1984, and since then technology has changed drastically, and there's even no comparison to how technology has changed over the last 40 years, which is why now we want contemporary experience, and this experience is what will also help Aganyan take flight in the coming years, him. Right, absolutely, Siddharth. Uh, thank you so much for bringing us the latest on this. Of course, we're going to be tracking the minute-by-minute -minute developments in the countdown, and we're just about 15 minutes away from the actual liftoff. Thank you so much for bringing us the latest on this for now, Siddharth.